Hey guys, my name is Chris Ware and today I'm going to be taking a first impressions look at Linux Mint 17 Mate Edition. Now just before I begin a little bit about how this review is going to go, usually when I do these Linux reviews I try and look at it from the position of maybe a Linux newbie or at least someone who's kind of new to the Linux world or at least someone who isn't particularly involved in operating systems and I'm going to be showcasing perhaps the bundled software and the uh, user interface more than other parts of it and like I say this is a first impressions review so I'm not going to go too much in depth. Usually what I do is I just show the bundled software, show what's different about the uh, operating system distribution, uh, if there is anything particularly different, give my thoughts on it, give my thoughts on perhaps sometimes the philosophy of it or the approach that they take, and um, just run through the install process, show you how easy it is, because the install process is a good example of how how developers approach a distribution and, and how they sort of see their user base. So uh, this particular first impressions review comes at the request of you guys because when I did the Cinnamon review you guys wanted to see what the alternative was. Linux Mint is actually quite famous for offering two flagship distributions, one with the Cinnamon desktop, the other with the Mate. And I've often criticized Linux Mint for having these two flagship distributions with two different user interfaces with no real explanation or at least no obvious explanation as to why one should pick one over the other. One isn't particularly newbie or more newbie friendly than the other. One isn't particularly more developed for a particular type of user than the other. It just seems that there are two versions of Linux Mint. And well, today we're going to see the difference because I've got to admit, I haven't given Mate a fair shout. So the download comes in at 1.28 gigabytes, which is about the same as the Cinnamon Edition as well. So it's not a particularly big download, but you're not going to be able to fit it onto a standard uh, CDR, uh, which is what, uh, say, the lightweight versions of Ubuntu, Lubuntu in particular, I'm thinking of, actually fit onto. But to be honest, nowadays the price difference and the hardware difference between CDs and DVDs is quite minimal these days. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's begin. And I'll talk a little more about my thoughts on Linux Mint as a wider distribution uh, as we go through this process. So... As usual, I run these through a virtual machine, and one of the um, uh, things you should bear in mind when I do run these things through a virtual machine is that, um, first of all, the um, hardware acceleration isn't as good, and the read-write is a, at a different speed because it's reading and writing from my hard disk rather than from, say, a CD or a USB. So the speed of an operating system as run through a virtual machine is probably not going to be particularly accurate to how it would work on a, on a functioning machine. Um, and also, uh, as well, is that um, so the hardware acceleration is a lot better on an actual machine. This is using virtual hardware acceleration. So uh, when it comes to things like graphics and visuals, um, imagine this to be um, looking very similar to how it would act on a low-end machine, maybe. Okay, so it's booting up and it's boot up reasonably quickly, but like I say, it's booting directly from my hard disk because I'm not running it off a USB or CD or anything like that. And um, it looks kind of similar to the Cinnamon Edition, but there are a few things that I do notice off the bat. Now, where my uh, sort of face cam is and my sort of Twitter handle is the same old um, date, um, network connection, and um, the uh, audio output. The background is exactly the same, if I remember correctly, as are the desktop icons and the icon theme. And the menu here, it does have a ring of GNOME 2 about it. Now, those of, of you who are familiar with GNOME 2 will know that GNOME, well, GNOME 2 obviously comes before GNOME 3. Now, the big difference that most people will look at, the difference between Mate and Cinnamon, the Mate and Cinnamon editions of Linux Mint, is that Mate, as in the desktop user interface, is based on GNOME 2, or forked from GNOME 2. Uh, when GNOME 2 was coming to a close as a uh, development situation, platform, whatever you want to call it, um, they, uh, there were a group of people that decided to fork GNOME 2 to continue to develop it because they didn't like where GNOME 3 was going. This mate, or as in, I think it's called mate is the proper pronunciation. That is, uh, this is the result of what GNOME 2 would, you know, forked off into. Cinnamon is an answer more further down the line where people were looking at GNOME 3. They liked some of the things about it. They liked how it was being di de developed differently and so forth, but they didn't like the fact that it was quite clearly catering to mobile, the mobile market, or at least a very uh, they took a very drastic change in their user interface and a lot of people who were involved with GNOME 3 wanted something a bit more traditional and I think, or, well, not specifically people that were involved with GNOME 3, but people who were involved with Linux Mint, I believe, actually. I think Cinnamon is a Linux Mint um, machination and 
and there were some people with Linux Mint who like conservative, they you know, and 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 steady user interfaces. They like the tried and tested method of of user interface, and they decided to keep um, a very regular and conservative looking user interface and put it on top of GNOME 3, or that was how it was originally conceived. And then uh, over time, um, I believe Cinnamon actually forked separately from GNOME 3. And so that GNOME, th uh, GNOME 3 and Cinnamon, I believe, are two separate user interfaces. Anyway, that's enough of the technical shenanigans of what's going on with the user interfaces. There is a lot going on there, though, and don't worry if you if I kind of lost you there a little bit. It's not overly important, but I do know that there would be a lot of comments in the comments section if I didn't sort of go over that. Also, again, uh, correct me if I do make any mistakes, because... Um, like I said, there's a lot going on there, and it's easy to, to, to miss out on some information. By and large, I do tend to like uh, Cinnamon because from what I've heard, and I'm not a developer myself, is that it's like Cinnamon is, is based on just a nicer development platform rather than GNOME 2, which is, uh, or, or Mate, Mate, which is uh, seeming to be a little bit out of date, and it even looks a little bit outdated, just little touches that I can see here now. So looking at the menu here like i say it does have a glimmer of gnome 2 about it some of you are gonna uh really enjoy that i think particularly more some more of you are old schoolers but um and and, and the panel looks very similar it, it there are it looks like the the kind of the panel from uh from older versions of uh, of linux mint when they used to build it on top of gnome 2 but it does the same thing and it's seemingly just as um just as user friendly um, you can, you know, you've got the search, which is which is always useful. I don't like going from mouse to keyboard in the user interface environment. I feel that even though it's a couple of seconds or it's a bit of movement, it, it it seems to sort of wreck the flow. But if you are looking, if you've got, you know, tons of programs installed, it is nice just to have a search bar. Also, what I do believe you can do, yes, Alt and F2, uh, you can also just type in your... Um, I, okay, gedit's not installed, but... Um, yeah, you can just do Alt F2 and, and type in your thing. So, um, and also if you press the Windows key, yes, the menu is also open. So it's very Windows-esque, which is why a lot of people do find Linux Mint suitable for newbies. I think Linux Mint is suitable for people completely across the board, if I'm, pers uh, if I'm completely honest. I know there are a lot of people that really like to get stuck into the nuts, nuts and bolts of the operating system, and people who do like highly customizable operating systems, particularly of the lightweight variety, or people that only like to have software installed that they're going to use, and they like to keep a very slim machine. This might not be the distribution for you. This is the kind of distribution that if you want something that works straight out of the box this is kind of what what you're going for also with Linux Mint uh, so um, is that there are a few things that they do put quite to the top of the list of priorities the first being stability stability is absolutely key here and that's a really really good thing because what the, the last thing anyone wants to do is fix bugs it's infuriating on any platform anywhere and I like the fact that li the Linux Mint developers and the people that you know put the whole distribution together kind of acknowledge this and um and they don't uh, update things they don't update things particularly very often if they think that it's going to risk the system they'll only you know they'll only upgrade it if there's a security issue or if there's um something that's low risk um and often it'll give you the choice it'll flag something up and it'll give you advice on whether or not something is going to be particularly risky to uh, to update from so anyway without further ado let's actually get the install process on because like i say the install process is a very good uh, litmus test on deciding uh, or having a look at, at, at the kind of knowledge you're expected to have when approaching a Linux distribution. Now, I suspect they're going to use the exact same installer, the exact same installer as the Cinnamon Edition. Um, yep, yep. Um, because, you know, why develop two installers? Um, Arrays disk, Linux Mint, yada yada. Obviously, what most people would do, particularly those of you that are a little bit uh, used to how Linux works and how Linux runs, is you will separate your. You, you might use the um, uh, the installation uh, program here to actually divide your hard disk into two separate um, and uh, parts partitions. Uh, one which will be for your documents and your home and your your sort of personal data, and another that will be for your your system and your programs that you'll run on it. Um, as a UK person, um, it's always important to make sure that um, you have the UK keyboard set up. I actually uh, have a few websites that use Google Analytics. And one of the great things about Google Analytics is that it can tell you 
um, which country people come from, but also how their keyboards are configured. And the number of people that come from the UK but have the US keyboards configured um, is remarkably high. Uh, okay, yep, yep. Use the password. I know, it's not a good password, but like I say, this is a, a throwaway system. Yep, yep, yep. And of course, if you're wondering, VirtualBox is the emulation software that I am using. I would kind of recommend it as well, actually. I'd, I've had very few problems, if any, with emulating software. It's what I did my, um, uh, what do you call it, the Android uh, emulation on, and pretty much all of my um, things I have used. I think I used QMU, QMU, years ago. Um, and that, I found that was pretty, uh, pretty good as well. So like I say, there's a very important actually piece of news with Linux Mint, which, which wasn't really widely publicized or as widely publicized as um, it should have been. But starting from Linux Mint 17, it's going to be based on uh, Ubuntu long-term um, long support releases. Now, what does this mean to you and I? Well, okay, so Ubuntu, which is another Linux distribution, uh, it's the biggest Linux distribution. Uh, I think I actually looked on Alexia to see which websites were most commonly visited, and um, and and I think it was by far Ubuntu. But th but then again, they do have a, a press department, whereas Linux Mint is just a couple of guys who have a passion about operating systems. Now, uh, Ubuntu release uh, have two types of releases. They have a regular release, which is an update to their operating system every six months, and then they have what's called a long-term support release, which is an update to their operating system every two years. So if you don't want to have to update your operating system every six months, because that is a lot to ask for the vast majority of people, if you don't want bleeding edge, cutting edge, brand new software every six months, um, but you're just happy with a system that works and works with a degree of stability, then you might want to choose to upgrade every two years. It's the same distribution, it's just the only difference is how often you decide to upgrade. Some people say that long-term supports uh, releases are more stable, but I do believe that is actually a bit of a myth. Um, they are kind of more stable to the point where if you fix an error that some, or something that goes wrong in a long-term support release of Ubuntu, it's a longer, like the chances of them fixing it by the time the next long-term support release comes out in two years time, whatever, is, is a lot higher. Um, but uh, at, at the time of a long-term support release, it has just as brand new software as a non-long-term service release. It's only because people tend to use long-term service releases for over a longer period of time that they get more used to it and they, they get more, um, uh, they, they have to fix the bugs less often and hence it appears that bugs, you know, the, the, the bugs appear in the system less often as a, in general. Um, feel free to discuss down in the comment section below if I'm wrong on that. Like I say, this, this by and large is hearsay. Um, but the point of a long-term su uh, support release isn't to be more stable but it's to have to upgrade less often because upgrading is a stability issue. It's not always stable or it's not always conducive to a mission critical environment to keep updating every six months when you can be doing so every two, uh, two years or three years. Um, and, and, and that means that overall your system and your operation is going to be more stable but it's not the actual software itself where the stability changes. It's just how you're using you're just using it in a more stable way. It also comes back to the Linux Mint Debian edition, which I will probably trial out at some point or another, uh, which is a rolling distribution. The difference, of course, between a rolling distribution and a scheduled distribution is that a scheduled distribution is released every X number of months or X number of years, like every six months or every two years. That's a scheduled distribution. A rolling distribution is one where you install a distribution to your system and then it switches out the individual parts as you need to replace them. Um, a case in point where um, if you have a, a broom, if you are a caretaker and you work in a school or whatever and you have a push broom to sweep up whatever falls on the floor, um, the idea of a scheduled release would be to replace your broom every six months. The idea behind a rolling distribution is that you would replace the bristles every time that you need to or you re um, replace the handle every time that it gets broken or every time it needs a new grip. Um, Rolling distributions replace the parts, whereas scheduled distributions completely throw out the old system for a new one. Um, and I have in the, in the past actually referred to rolling distributions as less stable systems, which is, again, 
it's a half truth. The um, if you know what you're doing and you know your repositories and you know how a rolling distribution works and you know how to implement a rolling distribution uh, in an effective way, then it is just as stable as a scheduled release. However, uh, if you are like me and are not up to date on all the repositories, all the dependencies and all the ins and outs of, uh, of a particular operating system to the extent uh, where you might need to for a rolling distribution, then uh, you can foolishly upgrade something which you might not, not, need to, not want to upgrade or you might not know the software. Um, uh, you know, upgrading X might break Y and so forth. And, uh, and as a result of that, you might have a less stable system because you don't really know how to use a rolling distribution. Um, there are rolling distributions which are more user-friendly. PC Linux OS, I believe, is a rolling distribution which has been hailed for its stability. So, like I say, when I do in previous videos state that uh, rolling distributions are less stable, they're less stable for less advanced users. If you're an advanced user, if you know what you're doing, then uh, then the stability is, is less of an issue. But, um, uh, but I kind of feel the need to actually correct that in this particular video because um, because it is pointed out quite regularly. But it's on my on my end, it's a lazy use of language rather than it's you know. Okay, so the video here now is running at about sixteen minutes, and it's finishing up the installation of the system. Gotta say that's not bad at all, actually. And I also believe that it is installing all the updates and stuff. So yeah. Now, one of the things I do love about Linux uh, Mint is that it does come with all the codecs bundled out of the box. Yeah, like as in, as default. You know, you don't have to select it, you don't have to download it. It comes bundled on a CD, which makes their live CDs particularly useful. I remember when I um, was at university and I when, I, when I came home to visit my parents, I would borrow their computer and they had an old version of Windows XP, which was very poorly maintained. However, with Linux Mint, what I did is I downloaded uh, and burnt a Linux Mint CD, and then I booted off the CD and used their live um, CD environment to actually surf the internet and do whatever I wanted to do, because it would not only be a performance boost, because uh, Linux Mint at the time, and probably still now, uh, will outperform Windows XP, at least a poorly maintained version of it, uh, Windows XP, but it also came, as because it came with all the bundled um, codecs and so forth, it meant that I could view YouTube videos and so forth out of the box. I wouldn't have to download and install every time I booted off the live CD. So as a result of how Linux Mint is put together, it gives you a fantastic live CD experience. Also, of course, actually looking at this installed software, another thing that I do like about Linux Mint is that it comes with better bundled software. Uh, it comes with Skype, it comes with Google Earth, Picasa, Steam. Picasa, I don't know, is Picasa still even maintained on Linux? I, it's been a long time since I used it. Um, Skype, unfortunately, and this isn't a fault of Linux Mint, this isn't a fault, fault of any anyone in the open source community, uh, really, but Skype is very poorly maintained on um Linux is uh, you know across the platform, um, and that is because surprise, surprise, the company Skype is owned by Microsoft. And yeah, of course, Microsoft aren't aren't really too keen to actually support a Linux environment. There are numerous ways, numerous ways to get around this. One is to settle for a older version of Skype if you only want to use it for instant messaging and maybe a bit of voice chat. Then the old version might you know help you. I mean, it is still technically maintained. But just really, like once a year, there might be an update, and that update might have a few bug fixes. You can also actually uh, install something like VirtualBox um, and have an Android uh, operating system running as an em you know emulated in VirtualBox, and then you might be able to get Skype working through the Android emulation. That's a bit of a long way around, um, and and I I I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd actually even recommend that, but in theory, it's a way around. I have heard of other people finding other ways to emulate the Android um, operating system and actually have uh, use it to install um, Skype as well. I have no idea whether or not Skype works on Wine. In my experience, Wine has been not great. Um, I, I applaud the effort, um, but I've not seen the results that I require out of it, unfortunately. Um, at least not when, it, certainly when it comes to stability and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Skype is is uh, is very poorly maintained on Linux. However, there may just be a silver lining to that: is that the whole Microsoft user experience, everything from Office to Skype, is moving to the cloud, and there is 
as of this very moment in time, at a cloud version of Skype, an online version of Skype, providing you have like an Outlook account and your Outlook account is linked to your Skype account, in theory, you can actually use Skype uh, through your browser. Now, I think it requires a browser extension, and I don't know if that browser extension actually works on the Linux version of Chrome, but when uh, I looked up the, um, the extension, uh, it does say available for Firefox, Google Chrome, and Internet Explorer. It doesn't say what operating systems it on, is, is on, but you never know. You might get lucky and you might actually be able to uh, to get the latest version of, uh, of Skype, at least online, if you, if you required a, a feature. Like, uh, I think the main feature that is missing is group video chats. Um, but in all honesty, I don't use Skype that often. Uh, the only reason I have a Skype account is because um, my YouTube network prefer to contact me through Skype, and there are a few people who, who do. Um, but by and large, when I do video conferencing and even audio conferencing, if I'm not using a, a phone service, I'll, I'll use Google Hangouts. It's better. It's better in, in every way. It's easier. Uh, the majority of people have a Google account, especially people, especially because I, of course, I work in YouTube a lot um, and online video. So the majority of people that I do work with, the overwhelming majority of people that I do work with, um, will have a Google slash YouTube account, and therefore, but but not necessarily a Skype account. So kind of works out for me. But yeah, if you want to substitute for Skype, Google Hangouts is probably the best probably the best place to go. Okay, so we finished the installation and we are on 21 minutes, 24 seconds. That's not particularly long to install an operating system, actually very nice and quick, just like Linux Mint's Cinnamon Edition and the Ubuntu's. So let's restart and see where we can go with this. So one thing I did notice when I was trying out the Cinnamon Edition, and this is more of an emulation uh, commentary than it is anything else, I had to switch between um, being able to record in like a 3D graphical environment to a 2D graphical environment. And if you watch the video, you can actually see me make the switch through my recording software on monitor two. But, um, but I haven't had to do that. I'm actually recording in 2D recording mode, um, and I have had zero problems with it so far. So, um, so far, the uh, the difference is to me it's it's zero. Like th there is a bit of a difference in the aesthetic of the the toolbar at the bottom. Um, the one in Mate is light, and the one in Cinnamon is dark. Um, the one in Cinnamon as well. I think it looks a little cleaner, but um, but ultimately um, like they're the same. Okay, so this is uh, installing directly into the operating system now. So, um, as of this moment in time, uh, because the operating system that we'll be booting up into now is going to be um, identical to the live CD, which is one of the reasons I do like Linux Mint so much, and, it, and, and Linux Mint by far is the best live CD version. That's to me, that's that's not even disputable. Um, maybe it might be to some of you guys in the comment section below. Everything is, but um, I've uh, I've got to admit, by far the best live CD, Mate or Cinnamon or whatever. Um, okay, so um, this gives you some of the new features here. Ideas pool, like I say, Linux Mint f is a lot better at listening to what the their user base wants. Uh, Ubuntu don't like Ubuntu. They have to sell stuff. That, that you know they're a lot more company focused and whereas like i said in previous videos and have got some slack for it that's a good thing like there needs to be some corporate element to linux um but linux mint does kind of um shy away from that a little bit and uh, and and it's much more user um orientated whereas uh, ubuntu does whatever the hell it wants and uh, and you've got to give uh, linux mint kudos on this one um you know their idea pool their you know they have acted many many times included you know bundle specific so so uh, software that people have wanted um and requested and so forth yeah like i say uh, you know like the mail client thunderbird i can't remember did was thunderbird ever included in um ubuntu um but everyone uses thunderbird thunderbird is a full featured client um part of the Firefox family, and, you know, you, you can't argue with it. Uh, Pigeon, as well. Um, Ubuntu, the Ubuntus don't generally include Pigeon, um, as well. Um, okay, so anyway, right, so this is this is the, uh, the startup screen. Get involved, donations, sponsors, forums, chat room, chat room IRC, of course. 
user guide, restore data. Um, I've never actually used Mint Backup. I always back up directly to the cloud, but uh, as I understand. So new features, well, let's have a look at new features. What have I got here? Oops. Ah, there we go. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, that's me double clicking and opening up a whole bunch of windows. When it does flicker um, the black, I think it did in, in another um, uh, review. Don't take that as to mean that it might, nest, might that might automatically as well happen in the uh, properly installed version of Linux Mint. That could very easily be um, a problem with my emulation software. Okay, so update manager hugely improved. I do remember seeing this from the Cinnamon edition. The type column, yeah, the type column. So um, if you look at, hopefully I will be able to see it here. It tell, yeah, it tells you the type of updates you can see in that far left column down there. Um, the, uh, I think it's the, um, the red exclamation mark is, the, uh, is, a, is a security update and um, the down arrows is just like a feature update, I think. Um, Of course, these are all worth reviewing over, over for yourself. Um, the driver manager, now available to install drivers without a connection to the internet. Now that, that's something. That's really something. That's good. Login screen, multi-monitor support improved. Because more and more people I know are using uh, mul you know, multiple monitors. And it's really, really, really useful, especially if you're doing screencasts, where I've got all my recording and, and produ production software on screen one. And then I've got all my, you know, and I've got actually what I'm doing on screen two, um, which I think is, uh, which is very, very useful. I can see if anything goes wrong on, on my left screen. Um, so, Mate 1.8. Um, you might want to read through that yourself. A lot of that doesn't mean too much to me because I don't know what it's upgrading from. Um, and it's using the Yahoo uh, is the default search engine in Firefox. That's interesting. I've seen it uh, as Google before on other, other iterations of uh, Linux Mint. Start page, for those of you that don't know, actually, start page is, a, is um, an exact clone of Google. Include All the results are the same as Google, except it doesn't take any of your personal information and it gives you a um, objective set of results. So if you want to, if you want to Google yourself to see how you, sh you know how sh how you show up, um, you know, or, or whether or not there's uh, someone with the exact same name as you who's perhaps more famous than you uh, or whatever, uh, you can actually look up start. You know, you use start page and it's a bit more objective. Whereas uh, Google just it gives you the results it thinks you want. Um, whereas start page gives you the results that rank highest on Google across the board, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I use it a lot for, for when I do political campaigns and stuff, when uh, candidates which I'm trying to, which I'm, who I'm working for, it's kind of important to make sure that when you Google their name, they come up the list. Now, if you do the, did that on Google, it would put your candidate top of the list because it knows that you're a supporter from your search history of that, uh, of that particular politician. But with Startpage, it doesn't take into account your search history, which is great. Um, anyway, so, um, do, 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 all applications... Just have a quick look at the bundled software, Firefox, HexChat. I can't say I'm particularly familiar with it. Uh, any of you guys who are familiar with it, please let, us, let, let me know and let us know down in the comment section below because um, uh, because it's, it, it would be particularly informative. Uh, but all the rest here, Pigeon, Thunderbird Mail, Transmission, I've used them all before. Great piece of software. I would probably include them in my ideal one. Uh, Lin uh, LibreOffice, uh, which is, for all intents and purposes, OpenOffice, just with a slightly different uh, philosophy. And, and LibreOffice is the it's the most popular and widely used Office package um, and Office suite in Linux nowadays, um, which it did take over from OpenOffice. I think you can still get OpenOffice if you wanted to particularly want to install that, um, but I could be wrong. Um, Banshee Music. Zero. Um, it gives you actually with um, uh, with the sound settings here. Um, with yes, it gives you very good. Um, obviously, you can't see the multiple devices that I've actually got because, of course, the emulation. But if you do have multiple devices, um, it gives you a lot of great options on how to use them and 
you know, w- w- whether or not you want to say listen through headphones or listen through speakers or listen through, um, you know, the HDMI on your TV with, if you've got one of those plugged in. So that's great. Um, yeah, so back to the bundled software now, system tools, yada, yada. Um, a lot of you guys do praise the Linux Mint tools. Um, and I've got to say they are good. Here's the Linux Mint software manager. But I've got to admit, I've got to say, as, as fine as these tools are, and as, as easy as they are to use, because they are easy to use, they're not maker or breakers for me. I would not pick Linux Mint based on its uh, specific tools as they currently are. Now, they might improve them to a level where they might, um, and I, I am kind of surprised. I don't think they're available upstream, which I think is a bit of a problem. What have we got here? I think what that black flashing is, is because I've set a uh, graphical memory limit, a, a graphical memory roof, so that it doesn't screw up my recording. Um, and, it, and I think that flashing black is uh, my emulation software running out of graphical memory, I think. Uh, so, let's just go to games. Games I always consider a bit of a benchmark on how Linux is improving, um, because that's where some of the more exciting developments are made. and. Surprise, surprise, no particularly exciting developments here. It's the same uh, games that have been available for a long, long, long time. However, I do believe you can get Steam, the Steam launcher, straight out of the box. That's good. That's good. And also, can we get can we get Skype? Skype comes bundled. It did say in the install package. Yep, you've got the Skype. You've even got a Pigeon add-on for, for Skype there as well. Um, and then I'm going to assume Picasa. Yep, Picasa. Is Google Earth. Yep, Google Earth package is there. Um, and these extra repositories, the, the Google Earths, the Skype, you need to add in extra PPAs to do that on Ubuntu. So it's, it's an extra step in the process. And again, for someone who's reasonably comfortable with Ubuntu-based distributions, that's not a big deal. And again, not a maker or a breaker. And there are, I, I do notice there are a lot of things like this with Mint. There are a lot of things where they've tightened up the user interface. They've tightened up um, the included software. They've made improvements here. And to me, Linux Mint is like Ubuntu with a million of these minor improvements. None of these individual improvements on their own, the Mint upgrade, the Mint backup, the improved welcome screen, um, the, the default bundle software, none of these on their own would make me switch from Ubuntu to Mint. But them combined, the entire philosophy, the, the, the clear demonstration that they listen to the people that use their software a lot more than Ubuntu do, the overall um, amalgamation of reasons why Linux Mint is better than Ubuntu does make me want to, you know, does make me switch to, to Mint. Um, but any of these reasons individually probably wouldn't. Um, but then again, I like how the Linux Mint developers approach an operating system and approach their user base. They do so with a lot more respect, a lot more intelligence and common sense, and with a lot more of a community feel towards it. Um, and um, whereas overall with, with Linux, I do feel that there is, um, that it's not always uh, as welcome into say proprietary software as it could be. I like the fact that Linux Mint uh, focuses on the choice element, whereas there is plenty of open source uh, applications and pieces of software that you can use. But it also does include your Google Earth, your Skypes and your uh, Picasso's and things like that. So it also, you know, gives you the option. And I like that option in uh, the Linux community is that, yeah, some software works fantastically and amazingly under the open source development uh, process. Sometimes you do need um, developers to protect their intellectual property. Sometimes they need to make a living off of it. Um, and sometimes you just need to give them that right. Maybe because it might make Linux a more attractive platform to develop for and thus we might end up with some, you know, even better software. And like I say, just as long as the choice is there, just as long as you have the option to use one type of software or another, depending on your personal preference, whatever those reasons might be, uh, I think is, is ultimately a good thing and a good way of looking at it. And I, I you know, I, I think that viewpoint is by and large shared by Linux Mint and the people who use it as well. So anyway, that's just a few thoughts of mine, a few thoughts on the distribution. Overall, the difference between Mate and Cinnamon for all, for all intents and purposes, guys, there's a cigarettes paper's width between them. Um, it's all under the hood. I would uh, go out on a limb and say that the mate might run a little smoother on older hardware. 
Um, it does look a little little dated, um, but not to the point where it would ever steer me away. Um, the panel looks a bit different, but again, offers the exact same functionality. The bundle default software is the same. The Linux Mint tools are the same. Um, and, and again, I am still a little bit confused as to why there are these two flagship distributions when they could really have one, like say the Cinnamon one is their main distribution, you know, and I certainly don't have a problem with them giving you a choice, but um, but to have uh, wh wh every time they release an update to Linux Mint, they do um, they do throw these two versions of the distribution at you at once without really telling you the difference other than the fact that one's got a different user interface. They don't tell you, w you know, whether or not uh, newbies might find this one easy to use over this one, or one might be for, for more advanced users, one might be for faster computers, and one might be for slower computers. One might, you know, they're, they're, the difference between Mate and Cinnamon Editions is really practically non-existent outside of Mate and Cinnamon, the difference. And even Mate and Cinnamon, as user interfaces, not that much difference between them. You could you could even switch out Mate for a LXDE with a with a Mint spin on it, and and again, it would basically be the exact same distribution. Um, there's very little in it, the very little very little difference between them. Um, but that being said, they're both really 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 good. I you know as 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 <laughs> as I've outlined many, many, many times. Okay, so just to wrap up, the final important piece of news when it comes to Linux Mint, which I talked a little bit about earlier, is that from Linux Mint 17 onwards, it's going to be replaced, uh, it's going to be based on long-term support releases of Ubuntu. That means that the up up upgrade process should be a lot easier, should be a lot more stable. And as a whole, um, it should actually be a lot more stable as well because the developers are developing on a system that they're more used to developing on. Um, whereas uh, they're they're switching their base every two years, I, I'd imagine, rather than having to do so every six months. So um, we probably will um, see a degree of uh, stability increase. That being said, the Linux Mint is by and large pretty stable as it as it is. I've never had a show-stopping problem with Linux Mint. I know a few of you guys in the comments have mentioned that. Um, some Ubuntu distributions have worked where other Linux Mint ones haven't. But the reason I initially switched to Linux Mint was because earlier versions of Linux Mint supported widescreen monitors, whereas Ubuntu didn't out of the box. Um, and you did have to mess around with the x.org file, which no one likes to do. I don't like doing that. It scares the hell out of me. So, um, so that's what made me switch to Mint at the beginning, and I'm glad I did. And I've always had a, a place for it in my heart ever since then. And yeah, the switching to long-term support uh, base means that it's going to be even more stable and it's going to be um and with you know if there is a particular line of software that needs to be updated uh you can guarantee that's going to be included in the linux mint repository as well rather than the ubuntu one that's that it's based on so um i i, th I think this is a win-win across for everyone when it comes to linux mint deciding to base it on on a more stable and a more long-term uh ready distribution and and i think that's uh, again, they always they always seem to make the right decisions. Whereas you know, whenever uh, there seems to be a change to Linux Mint, nine times out of ten, or even ninety nine times out of a hundred, it seems to be an improvement. With Ubuntu, whenever they make a big change, it almost certainly is going to be something that we're going to have to find a way around, find a fix for. You know, it, it, Ubuntu is is kind of you know, it it wants to do its own thing, and and it, it's, it's it, again Ubuntu, fine, fine, fine distribution. I'm certainly not knocking it but it certainly doesn't listen to its user base as much as li the Linux Mint team do. So anyway guys, that's about it from me today. This video is a little bit longer than my usual reviews, but I kind of feel that um, oh, I got a lot to say about it and a lot to say about Linux Mint in, as a whole. Should, I, should you pick this one or Cinnamon? I can't, I can't say. I can't say. There's, like I say, there's a cigarettes paper's width between them. I probably will stick to Cinnamon because that's the one that I've uh, used the most. Uh, it looks a little bit cleaner. Th it looks a little bit more like it's based on GNOME 3, whereas this one looks like it's based on GNOME 2. I think, actually, there is a few more features in Cinnamon. Uh, hot corners. Uh, if you don't know what hot corners are, it's when you move your... Uh, mouse to the corner of a screen. You don't click on anything, um, but it gives you it, it. It performs a function. Maybe it might line up all your windows or line up all your desktops, and you can do that on Cinnamon. And it doesn't appear you can do that on this particular version. But then again, this does look like it's a bit easier on the graphics on on the graphics card. So if you've got a slower machine, maybe Mate might work. Maybe. But then again, if you are on a slower machine, maybe you might want to try something even lighter than Mate. Maybe like LXDE. Maybe. 
I know, I'm a big fan. And also QTDE as well. I've heard a lot of things about that recently, so I might just have to give that a go at some point. Anyway, guys, if there is any particular distribution or anything else you'd like me to show you guys, uh, then feel free to leave it down in the comments section below. Please, again, leave any comments down in the comments section below, actually. And if you want to um, keep in touch as well, feel free to tweet me at the tweet Twitter handle just down there. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching this long, if you've gotten this far into the video. Um, it really means a lot. And... Um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you have been awesome. Take care now.